So in this video I'm going to have a look at how to add some beads to your embroidery. Now this is um, an instant way of adding some texture and some sparkle so really worth knowing how to do. So in this video I'm just going to go through some different kinds of beads um, and what are the materials and equipment that you'll need and then we'll have a look at some pieces from my collection. So beads come in literally hundreds of shapes and sizes um, but let's just concentrate on the ones that are good for embroidery and the ones that you can get easily and fairly cheaply so that you can have a go at this. So let's look at the main ones that are really good for embroidery. So by far the most popular beads to use in your embroidery and the easiest ones to find is the seed bead. So they look like little seeds, so this is what they look like little round beads with a hole through the middle, fairly consistent in size, they do vary a little bit. Um, these ones are glass, get glass ones if you can. Um, they do do plastic but they're not very nice, so glass ones um, and they're cut from a long tube of glass and they're just chopped up into these little round beads and you can see these ones are nice sort of multi colour, they're pink and gold. So they come in lots of different beautiful colours um, and they often come sort of even in a pot like this. These are Gutterman ones, or you might see them in a packet. These are Mill Hill ones, both really nice beads to use if you can get hold of these ones. So they come in different sort of forms of packaging, but they're all um, made the same way and they're seed beads. Right, let's have a look at the Bugle bead. So again, made the same way as a seed bead, but cut to a longer length. You can see that here. So a long sort of cylindrical shape but cut out of a long piece of glass with a hole in the middle. And these are bugle beads and these are really nice. You can add them on their own or with seed beads. Um, obviously a lot bigger because they're a lot longer. Um, they do come in different lengths. There's some gold ones that are slightly shorter and you can get really long ones as well. You can't really get any longer than your needle. Um, but I have seen quite long ones but they won't be longer than a needle. So those are bugle beads. So those are two really good basic beads that you'll find lots of different places, great for your embroidery, but let's have a look at some of the decorative types of beads that you can get and use as well. Now there are thousands of different types of beads and as much as I'd love to spend all day showing you all of them, I've just picked a few sort of different ones just to show you what kinds of things you can get and the different materials they're made out of because this is a really lovely way to embellish something and you may not need many of these in your work but just a few will make a big difference. So in no particular order, I'm just going to start with my favourite um, and these are crystals. Um, these are quite expensive <laughs> for a bead but you can just see how beautiful they are. Um, and these come with a coating on them that gives them that extra iridescent look um, and they're quite big that you so you probably add it to the decoration rather than in with another stitch but um, really beautiful to add to your work it will really give it an air of something special if you've got some crystals in it you can also get different shapes as well so these are lovely little Japanese ones they do very good um, small decorative beads that are um, the same size so if you need things that are exactly the same size go for Japanese beads because they're excellent and these ones are little triangles so you get loads of different shapes again sort of two-tone colour small these ones um, but little triangle shapes so these ones we've got here are made from metal so they're like a very large seed bead they're round with a hole through the middle and a bit of a sparkle but they're metal ones now you can get decorative shapes that don't just have to be round. I should take one of these out, see if I can show you. There, it's a little butterfly, so it's like a cut glass shape and a little butterfly shape. And these are beautiful and I just like looking at these ones. I don't think I've ever used them, but um, really beautiful. So you can get shaped beads as well. These ones are freshwater pearls. Um, the holes tend to be very small in freshwater pearls. I don't know if it's difficult to drill them. Um, so you'll need a tiny needle, which we'll talk about later, um, but beautiful to add to your work. Um, are a little bit expensive if that's something that you need to consider, but just beautiful added to your work. We've got some um, kind of, I think these might be plastic ones, but they're 
sort of like donut shape so a huge hole in the middle and different colours so it's gold on one side and pink on the other side so something a little bit different there we got square ones so they've actually got a different colour inside so it's like a tube of colour inside and a clear square on the outside so those ones are quite interesting so we've got some semi-precious stones here and these ones are amethyst so these are very irregular, really different shapes and sizes in these. So these would be great for some texture if you wanted to add some different texture. If you want to do something uniform, not so much, but just got a hole through the middle, sew them down like you would a normal bead. Got some ceramic painted ones here. These ones are absolutely beautiful. I love these ones. They're a little bit bigger. So again, something to add as a decoration on its own. And I've come to these ones last because I made these ones. So these are fabric ones um, and I've just painted some silk and then I've rolled the silk around something very fine, probably a cocktail stick. So I've got a hole down the middle and you can cut them to whatever length you want. So you can actually make your own as well. Um, and these are fabric ones. So if you're doing any embroidery on your clothing, it is worth thinking about what type of beads you use just in case it needs hand washing or even if you want to put it in the machine. So um, glass beads are better. The better the quality, um, the better they'll survive on clothing and survive in the wash. So do think about that as well. Right, let's talk about the size of beads. Now, if you're buying a bugle bead, it'll come in a length, usually millimetres because they're quite small. So it will just give you the length of the bugle bead. Decorative beads will be the same. If they're round, you'll just get one measurement, four millimetre diameter. Um, if they're oblong or some other weird shape, you'll get a length and a width of bead. Um, but seed beads are a little bit different, so you get a numbering system with seed beads. Um, it's actually called an AUGHT number, A-U-G-H-T, I think. And you'll see it written as a six and a slash and a zero, or a six and a little, what looks like a degree symbol. Um, the history behind that is quite long and complicated. I did look it up and there was a suggestion it was how many beads fit into an inch and then somebody else says oh it doesn't actually work when you measure it so I think that was a nice idea um, but just know that basically the larger the number of the bead the smaller it is so it's the same as embroidery needles so larger the number the smaller the bead and for seed beads you'll get sort of size three maybe will be the largest up to sort of 22 24 which will be minute and be very very small i'm just going to show you these ones here so i've got different seed bead sizes here so this is a six so these are quite large if i put my nail next to that you can see how big they are so it goes at six these are an eight these red ones i showed you at the beginning are a nine these ones are an eleven and I don't actually know what size these ones are, but you can see how small they are compared to those ones. So probably up in the high high numbers, nearer 22 or something, something approaching that. So the smaller the number, the larger the bead. If you want something around the middle, a nine and an eight um, is quite a good medium size to have a go with. So basically what you need to know for your needles is does the bead fit over it? Um, it's as technical as that. Um, so that's obviously including the thread that's in the needle um, and bearing in mind that beads do alter in size slightly. So you might buy a pack of seed beads and some of them go on the needle and some of them don't. So just discard the ones that don't. So just try that first. Now you can buy beading needles. Um, they're very long and thin and they bend very easily, um, but they're mainly for sort of beading, three-dimensional beading on its own or bead weaving and I find normal needles are absolutely fine. So I've got some here, so I've got a size 10 embroidery, a size 12 embroidery um, which is for the really small beads because they are 
very small these size 12 needles and this needle here is a straws needle or a milliner's needle and this has an eye that's the same width as the needle so if you're using very small bees and the pearls you'll need one of these as well um, you'll need the eye is where it will get stuck so you'll need the eye the same width as a needle so go for a straws or a milliner's needle So you can buy a thread that's specific to beading. It's called a Nymo thread. This is what it looks like. It comes on these little spools. They're quite sweet. Comes in different colours. There's a few colours here. Um, and this is quite strong. It's a synthetic thread um, and it's not twisted. So what can happen with this is the ends can fray a little bit, but it is pretty strong. Um, so if you want to sew them onto clothing, especially, this is a really good thread. If you don't have any of that, you can use a normal sewing cotton. It's absolutely fine. Double it up if you can't see your thread. If you want to hide the thread and have a little bit of extra strength, you can double that. You can also run it through some beeswax as well, and that will just coat the outside and make it a bit smoother to stitch with. Um, if you're adding it to your embroidery thread, you can just use a normal embroidery cotton. Um, make sure it goes through the eye um, and the needle. Um, the eye of the needle, sorry, I should say, and that both of those go through the bead. So just check that before you try out your embroidery. And this is a stranded, so you can strand the thread, so you can use one or two. Um, this isn't so strong as normal sewn thread or the Nymo beading thread, so you might want to run this through some beeswax as well or use a couple of strands of that. So I've had a little delve in my collection and I've pulled out some of my beaded embroidery projects and I thought you'd like to have a look at those. So let's start with um, the simplest one. So this is beads, quite clearly says <laughs> what it is. Um, so the word beads, stitched in beads and French knots. So you can see how sort of similar they are. And if you wanted a little bit more texture from French knots, you could add some beads instead and you can fill them in and you can do outlines and it's got a little decorative butterfly bead on there so just a really nice sample of the different things that you can do with the beads. So I've done a few of these little dragonfly projects we do have one version of it on the channel also so do check that out and that shows you how to stitch the body but just to show on this one um, how I've used the beads for the eyes um, just instantly say eyes they'd be quite hard to stitch them that big and that prominently so two round beads for the eyes are perfect and I've just added a little decorative teardrop bead so there's just a hole in the end of that and just added that onto his tail just to complement his eyes. So this is a piece based on medieval embroidery called Opus Anglicanum. We have two videos on this project to show you how to stitch her face and to show you about this technique. But what they used in the medieval times was actual jewels and actual pearls and gems. Um, I have used glass here to represent what they used. And you can see the little seed beads here that I showed you earlier. There's a pearl in the middle of the seed beads and I've added these glass cut um, beads on the bottom to represent the jewel so you can make a really good impression of what would have been used without the, all the expense as well so a really good example of lots of different types of beads to recreate something historical. This is a little bit something different from my collection so this is my beetle wing piece so these are actual beetle wings here but I've complemented these with beads of the same colour so these are blue and green um, they shimmer in the light and I've picked this out in the beads as well. So I've got glass cut beads in the centre, quite large ones in the centre. And just on the ends of the wings here, I've got the crystals that I showed you earlier. So just a way of adding some opulence um, and some sparkle. So you can go all out in this and add loads of beads on. And I'm just going to tilt it just so you can see it. Sparkle and how much that sparkles. So really beautiful use of the crystal cut beads. So this is a little sampler I made for a class just to have a go at some different stitches and to put some different things down. So I've got quite a few shisha mirrors on here, but you can just see these beads that I've added into the stitches and make them part of the stitch. So they've got some French knots down the centre and some beads on the edge. So they go really well with French knots actually, just to bulk up that texture a little bit more. And I've got some around this shisha mirror here, just put them in between the stitches and stitch them onto the ends as well. Got some of the bugle beads that we looked at on the flower around here and a couple down here as well. So nice just to add a few 
just to bring out some of the elements. So this is a great one for my lovely American friends if you're needle pointers over across the pond. Um, really really easy to add them into your needle point um, projects and this is a little sampler I made here and you can see some beads in here so we've got some large seed beads in the centre of the flower here to create the whole centre of the flower in fact we've got some small ones here in I think this is an upright star stitch I think actually so star stitch in there just got a few in there to indicate some flowers I've got some more in the center of this flower here and I've actually made an entire flower out of them here I've threaded them on and made a little loop of beads and made the petals out of them um, a couple of center ones here so just the addition of a few beads um, gives you lots of extra techniques to play with there's another piece of needlepoint which I actually first taught in America many many years ago and we did some shading here and we did a little bit of stump work on it got some ribbon work in here and then just nestling in the ribbon work there are a few little beads just to pick out some flowers so they also add sort of a bit of light the light reflects off it um, and if you need something lifting a bit this can be a nice way to do it and I've got a couple in the background with some sequins as well just to add some little detail so really beautiful to add them to your needlepoint projects and this is another piece that I taught in the States that we did on canvas. So we were looking at different canvas techniques and pulling the canvas threads out. But when you pull things out, you have to put stitches back in and putting beads on the stitches works nicely. So I've got some down here along this stitch here. Got some in the background behind the butterfly and some along here as well in the drawn thread area. So for this piece I was actually given the beads and my task was to make a piece inspired purely on the beads. So the beads came first in this piece and this is called Washed Up and this is the seaside so here's the foaming sea coming in and this is deep under the sea and these are all the jewels that have been washed up onto the beach. So we've got Swarovski crystals in here, got some little seed beads around here, some more over here some square beads, I um, don't even know what shape that is, like a little dumbbell kind of a bead, some faceted ones, there's a little heart. So I was just given this bag of beads and told to make something out of it and um, I really enjoyed this so to actually be inspired by the beads first rather than adding beads to something as an afterthought, this piece was all about the beads and again because there's so many faceted ones in here I'm just going to move that around a bit so you can see it glistening. So this is the last piece that I want to show you for my collection and this is the one I did for my silk shading book and this is an Apache and I wanted to show you this one because these beads here are handmade beads especially for this project so I actually got Jonathan to make these for me. Um, those of you who have met Jonathan on some of our previous videos um, and he runs our shop but he's also a very talented modeler and he made these beads to my specification because I couldn't find anything that was quite right so he has sculpted these and painted them and he cut these ones as well down here and painted these as well so if you can't find something that's exactly perfect you can make your own so I just wanted to show you that to see handmade beads and how they can add to your embroidery. So I hope you've enjoyed this little look through my bead collection. I've learnt something about beads and ready to have a go. So we've got quite a few videos on how to stitch beads down and in different ways. So do check those out here. We'll put a link to the playlist um, at the end of the video. Um, and do check out all our other videos as well. And if you've enjoyed this video, do give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the little bell for notifications of when we upload something new. And we'll see you next time.